Good afternoon, my fellow beauty and barber professionals. I am Tamara Johnson Sheely. I am lead advocate of politics, beauty, and barber, where we address legislation state to state that affects our industry. And today we have a call to action. A call to action, Ms. Kay Kendrick, our Georgia Cosmetology Board Chair, has something to say. Good morning, Ms. Kay. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you. And so you sadly, like we are here. But what is, yeah, yeah. What is going on in Georgia? Well, a uh, bill has been introduced. It is House Bill 2. And the basics of this bill is that they would deregulate hairstyling completely. People would be able to go open up facilities, wash, not cut, but wash, style, and dress out hair without any kind of governing uh, sanitation no kind of uh, licensure whatsoever. It would also deregulate the makeup part of the industry and they want to deregulate the threading in the industry. These three phases alone are so dangerous to be uh, services performed by people that don't have any idea about sanitation, people that don't have any idea of what chemicals it will repair. All of those things combined together can create such a consumer danger we deregulate these parts of it. Yeah. And it's, you know, this license is our, you know, this is our livelihood and we've been fighting for years tirelessly. And I want to thank you, Kay, for all that you've done over the past. What, how many years have you been the board chair? Like many, many years where you've been fighting and holding our industry strong here in the state of Georgia. Well, I've been on the board since 2004 and I've been the chair since 2011. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Any other bills? Is this is House Bill 212, and it, there's a hearing at the Capitol on this Tuesday. There is a hearing Tuesday at three o'clock in room 606. There will be three bills that will be read: the 212, which is very derogatory for our industry. Um, 154 is a composite board bill, and I had some reservations about that bill because in the bill, if you were part of this composite organization state um, function uh, facility, you would be required to mandate that everybody that applied have a fingerprint background check. That was one of my biggest concerns because as you know, we're really proud of our system where we rehabilitate people in prison and then when they get out of prison, they have a pathway to a, a job so that they don't really, uh, reviolate their, you know, the laws. And so if you have to do a background check on every single applicant, that would require us to work uh, against these people. And in a lot of cases, it might um, prevent them from being able to have a job in our state as well as other states where this composite license would be functioning. So I really have a problem with that. I also have a problem with the cost associated to it to the state. state well, yes, um, we don't want to have to create a bigger problem than what we already have. I've been told that they would work with us and adjust those issues. I'm waiting to see what kind of a compromise is going to come about with that and before we actually make a lot of more um, objections to it. We also have another bill that I'm not sure the number, I think it's one three, it's uh, House Bill 354, I believe. Um, it is a bill that we, the board, introduced. And what this bill would do would be able to categorize all of the things in the law that have been scattered all throughout the law. Given uh, the changes that we've made, especially when we combined the barber and the cosmetology board, there was a lot of cutting and pasting, a lot of clipping, and a lot of moving. And a lot of things got left out that should have been in there. And a lot of things were scattered all the way out throughout the bill. So we wanted to compact it into a form that was simple enough for anybody to look at and determine what the law was that governed the facilities and the licensees. And this does that. But it also added... Uh, the fact that we, we, our barbers were still not up to the same age level as the cosmetologists, which was an oversight. So we wanted to make sure that all the age levels were completely, you know, unified across the board, that everyone's being treated fairly. Uh, the barbers were not allowed to have but one apprentice for, uh, for barbershops. We changed that so that you could have one apprentice per a licensed barber, which is what the cosmetologist does. We try to make it fair to everybody so that there are more people that can work in our industry safely. And, and professionally. We did add an addition to it, and the addition is a smaller bill that would allow people to do just uh, threading, tweezing, hair removal services with the exception of laser services. Um, this would be a thorough course. The exam is already on the national uh, board's registry, 
and we feel like it would give more people to get into the work field for a lesser number of hours. There are a lot of people that don't want to do anything but waxing or tweezing or threading. And, and the same, a lot of doctors will tell you that there's a big, bigger safety in waxes and the threading and the um, uh, tweezing than there are in other services because you're putting something hot on somebody's skin and you're ripping it off. Uh, we see um, uh, drooping eyelids from improper threading that cause people to have to have surgeries to improve their vision. And around the eyes, you know, is a very fragile, uh, thin surface. And you can have splitting of that skin. You can have uh, extra wrinkling of that skin. Once that elasticity is gone, there is no bringing it. So we feel like that and the fact that contagious diseases that can be spread by using your tools and your Things like herpes, we've seen herpes of the eyes, we've seen severe eye infections, we've seen eye, a vision loss and uh, stitching that had to be done to a person's body um, to, to repair damage done by improper waxing uses. So we want to prevent people to work in the industry and we feel like that part of the bill would be a big benefit to our industry. That's the basis of what our bill is and it will be heard that same day. Mm -hmm. So it's three bills that will be heard on this coming Tuesday, 3 p.m. at the Capitol. Yes, the, the subcommittees will meet at 3 p.m. The full committee uh, will be at 4.30. So it's going to be a long afternoon. And anybody that wants to join us, we welcome you. If you don't want to join us, but you feel as passionate as we do about saving our, our profession and, our, and protecting our consumers, you can call your senator and your uh, House of Representatives and you can tell their, their staff, if you don't talk to them, that you want them to vote against any deg regulation of our industry. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, Georgia, this is our call to action. We have until Tuesday. Let's make sure we make our voices heard. This is our industry and we must protect it and we must demand that others respect it. So thank you, uh, Chairwoman Kay. We appreciate you and all your, your hard work to, to make sure we ensure that our industry is remains viable. So thank you. Thank you, and I appreciate you getting the word out, and I appreciate the work you do also. It takes a team effort to keep our industry safe because every year somebody comes at us with something that they feel like that we're irrelevant and they need to deregulate us. Last year it was trying to deregulate our, our apprenticeship program. We're very proud of that program. It is one of the best in the nation, and we're able to put people in the workforce making a living while they're learning the trade. So we fought hot and heavy to protect that and we were successful and i feel like we can be successful in protecting us again we just need everyone to let the uh the, these legislators understand what we do um let make them understand what we do and make them understand how important it is one of the gentlemen that was speaking at the uh, last week um his statement to me was i don't understand why y'all have to have so many hours to do what you do we, I, I run a restaurant, and in 45 hours, I can have my certification. I could not make them understand that cooking your food and wiping off a table and sterilizing that environment is a whole lot different than us touching people every day and using the tools that we use and the chemicals that we use on a daily basis. So it's an educational process, and we have to let them know that we are more than just yesterday's communications. We're today's professionals, and um, we, we want to keep it that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we, we're going to show up and we're going to let them know that this is an industry that you don't want to mess with those cosmetologists, those barbers, those estheticians and those nail techs. Not an industry that you want to want to take backwards. We're actually we're moving our industry forward. So thank you. Exactly. Thank you so much. And everybody, uh, if you come, we welcome you there. If not, we'll let you know what goes on when we, when we get done. Thank you yeah. so much.